Good morning. What a crowd and welcome. My name is Carol Schneeweiss and I'm the Distance Education Director for the Department of Social Work and our BSSW Director has been inadvertently delayed. She will be here in a few minutes but we're going to go ahead and get started uh, because your time is valuable and we really want to begin this celebration for the hard work that your students have gone through. So we'd like for you to stand and welcome our 2019 graduates. Wow, we got a seat for everyone? Wow, please have a seat. What amazing group and audience. We're so pleased to have you here. I also want to acknowledge uh, this is being live streamed for those family members or students who weren't able to come today. We know this is a very important event and we want to be able to share it um, in all ways with as many people who want to share your joy at the hard work that you have done. The, the first thing I would like to do um, is have our faculty have a seat. We have a few extra seats. <laughs> Come on, fac. Oh, yeah, yes. Sure, let's get everybody seated. You know, we got to give the housekeeping first. <laughs> and I'm sorry for those of you who are still standing in the back, um, but what a great problem to have, to have so many people who want to celebrate this, um, that there aren't enough seats. This actually is the last event in this building, I'm sure you've been hearing, that, uh, that there's going to be massive remodeling and so they're going to close the doors behind us today, start to move out next week and then kaboom. So uh, we are privileged to have this last event here. It's, it's a, a space that has served us well and our students. So in moving forward, um, I would like to introduce the chair of our department, Dr. Karen Lee Barkdahl. Hi, everybody. For the hooding ceremony yesterday, can you hear me okay? The, this mic kept drooping and doing weird things, so holler, I want to make sure that you can all hear okay. Um, having this place overflowing, um, so I'm, I'm kind of recovering myself emotionally, it's a really good problem to have. And we're just so honored to see the way that you all support um, your beloved students and now graduates and, and newly minted social workers that are here today. We know, we know it's harder and harder and harder to get through these programs. It's expensive, it's difficult, it's taxing. And the traditional student role, what we used to think of, um, has really disappeared. Students work, they work hard, often they're part of sandwich generations, often they're having kids and, and tending children and tending aging parents. And it's a longer journey and it's a harder journey. And we respect that it's much more of a struggle to be here. So I want to honor and tell you that we know that. I think things need to change so it's not so much of a struggle. And I know that you all will be part of those changes that need to happen because it's really important that higher education and being able to be part of professions like social work be accessible and available to everybody. So I know because you're social workers, you also care deeply about all of these social justice things. So. Um, and you'll be part of those changes. So I really um, commend you for, for getting to this point and know that you, we also know how interdependent we are as social workers, right? 
Nobody does this alone, and the sheer volume of people here to show their love and support and celebrate with you today really tells us what an interdependent world we live on and how much we live in and how much we need to count on each other to succeed and to thrive. So I'll formally welcome faculty, staff, family, and friends to the Department of Social Work's spring semester pinning ceremony. Um, I, I guess you guys probably know how um, passionate I am about the profession by now. You've, I don't get to teach the undergraduates anymore, but I get to hang out, uh, come to some of your events, um, uh, be engaged in some of the things that the clubs do, and uh, get to, uh, on occasion, even advise some of the students. So um, while I don't get to be in the classroom with you, I'm very much aware of what a talented and cool class this has been and how enthusiastic the faculty have been about you. Um, it's really a, an audacious profession that you're joining, and you probably know that. Few professions claim to be able to help students navigate everything from working with individuals to groups, families, communities, society at large, social policy. We kind of claim the world as our province and say everybody deserves to have a good quality of life, Everybody deserves to have a helping hand along the way, and everybody deserves just and fair systems to see that they are well treated. So we're not just about changing individuals, we're about changing systems. And that's a tall order, and the interpersonal skills, as well as the content knowledge that you've developed, and the values and ethics of our profession will carry you uh, through many, many challenges. We know that you'll have challenges with clients, let me tell you, I stand here to tell you, you'll have challenges in your workplaces. These places aren't always fair and just. They need transformation too. Our larger societies need more justice, more transformation to ensure that the least vulnerable among us also have opportunities and support. And I know that you will care deeply about those things wherever you go and wherever your next steps take you. So this profession is unique. It's a calling, as much as it is a profession, correct? Yeah? Many people feel very called to come to this work. It's pretty audacious to think about, too, a profession that claims social justice as its mission, helping the most vulnerable in our, and working with and alongside the most vulnerable in our societies as its mission, and one that claims to be about improving quality of life for all people as its mission. It's daunting and it's noble and there's no there there. Every day that I've been a social worker, and although I teach now, and I'm also a professor, I'm a social worker first. When people ask me who I am and what I do, I say, I'm a social worker and I teach. So I hope that you'll too carry that pride in being part of a special and noble profession. Because we're so broad, and so diverse and so versatile in what we do, and we work in all kinds of workplaces, I hope that you will claim that first. Wherever your next maybe graduate degrees or, or tasks take you, that you'll tell people proudly, I'm a social worker, and you can add the rest. So I'll, I'll send you forth with that exhortation today to be really proud um, of being part of something so unique as this wonderful profession. We know that you've worked hard to develop competencies, knowledge, skills, and values over the course of your studies. An additionally wonderful thing about social work, besides our belief in competence and lifelong learning, is our shared belief in the inherent dignity and worth of every person. During the most politically polarized time in our country that most of us living have ever experienced, it behooves us to remember that all of the knowledge, skills, and values the strengths-based framework that we bring to our, per our work, the inherent love of humanity that calls most of us to this work, enable us to bridge divides that others find daunting and help build paths to understanding, peacemaking, tolerance, and healing. You have my heartfelt congratulations on a job well done. You're ready to join us as colleagues and to represent us well in your agencies and in our communities. You've already heard my plea that you maintain strong identities as both social workers and change agents, yeah, wherever your path may take you. 
and you have our confidence that you will dedicate yourselves to not only fixing problems, but to building that more just, humane, and compassionate world. I know that you've had some good mentorship in our program, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, and she hates attention, she's going to kill me, but I have tears in my eyes today because not only is it the last, not only is it because you all are here, and it's the last time we'll be together in this space for one of these wonderful ceremonies named in honor of our of past undergraduate director, Myrna Haga. So I think about her knowing this would be the last time in this building, but I know it's the last graduation for our beloved faculty who's retiring, Professor Barbara Kramer. And Barb has had that quintessential social work career. She's gone from micro to macro work. She's been a change agent um, and made a difference in the state of North Dakota and beyond. And we're very privileged that she came and spent the last years of her career teaching in our department and being an advisor to our clubs. And uh, I don't need to tell you all what a special lady she is. So I think that um, I just have to dedicate the ceremony in honor of you today. Barb will miss you so much. So I'll close with that so we can get on with the celebration and just get to have a chance to tell you congratulations on achieving this incredible milestone today. We really can't wait to see what you do next. Welcome. I'm not sure if all of you know me, but um, so much for rolling with ambiguity. Um, I thought this was at 930 in my mind. I have a child graduating, so somehow in the translation, I showed up late. So I apologize to you. Um, for you students who have had me, I will take five points away from my uh, participation grade today. <laughs> so thank you for stepping in and, and moving, moving the ceremony forward. Um, I am thrilled to be here. This is such an honor, and I'm excited for each and every one of you. I see lots of familiar faces out there. So we are going to go ahead and move on to the student speakers. And the first speaker um, is very active on campus and in the community. She's currently the outgoing Phi Alpha president and is going on for her master's degree, um, Anissa Holwerder. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this microphone is kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, well, hello, friends, family, and faculty, and thank you for making your way out here on this beautiful morning. Um, and to the wonderful class of 2019, please make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Anissa Howerta, and I'm going to be speaking here for you today. And first off, if you feel the need to clap, snap, or rejoice at any time, that is perfectly okay with me. Um, class of 2019, this is your address, and today is your day. Um, I have not had the average education, so I have quite a few thank yous to get through, so bear with me. First of all, I want to start with thanking the Lord for always having my plan in mind. All the power and glory is yours forever. Thank you to my wonderful parents for always showing me support and giving me love. Um. <laughs> then to my many educators I've had in my life that have taught me to think twice about how the world is and any injustices within it. Um, starting with my beautiful mother, who was my first, best, and lifelong teacher. Um, being homeschooled on the air base, she was my main role model, even though at the time I may not have realized the methods to her madness. <laughs> uh, however, there is not a day that I do not think back to her advice, lessons, and wish that I had the confidence that she expresses every day. Then are my high school competition and speech teachers, Mrs. Ridlin and Mr. Opp. Um, they both taught me how to use my voice in ways I never thought I could, and I always keep those skills for my future professions. Also to my internship agency for taking me in for over 400 hours this semester and giving me my first taste of social work practice. Thank you so much to Freedom Church. Um, 
finally to all my professors and advisors that have graced me at UND so far. A big thank you for dealing with my late papers, concerned questions, and way too many complaints. <laughs> um, you guys do so much for us all, and we appreciate everything you do so much. Um, today, I am going to begin with a quote. Education, then, beyond all other devices of human origin, is a great equalizer of the conditions of men, the balance wheel of social machinery. Horace Mann, 1848. At the time of his statement, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, and all attempts to do so were punishable by death upheld through the United States law. Any women or individuals of color in this room today born during this time would also face the same repercussions. It's so easy to forget how we all were able to be here today when we were not the ones who paved the path for this justice. For generations, women like me questioned whether education was a privilege or a right and wondered who was able to hold the keys to knowledge and be the guardian of information. They were dismissed, harassed, beaten, humiliated for even feeling this way. However, we've made great strides to continue to be the persistent thorn in the side of America's injustices today. About 20 years after this quote, black and women's suffrage were divided due to the release of the 14th Amendment. Black men were allowed to vote, but all women were left in the dust, making it clear that it was not women who could ever hold the power to education. 1920 is a year women in America should never forget because it proves how far we've come in less than a century. I'm sorry, boys, but the future is female. <laughs> um, it, also, um, it is also unstoppable. Many colors, many shades, and many shapes, and many voices coming together for the greater good. Um, now, as a female of color, I am pretty proud to be where I am today. As social workers, we know better than anyone that there is never a lack of injustice in this world. It is our, in our code of ethics to be an advocate against any discrimination we see and speak against it with compassion. One client at a time, our world is becoming a better place because of our commitment to this profession. When I look at my graduating class of social workers, everyone's unique. I see future educators shining with potential. All of us come from different backgrounds, provide our own insight, and are headed toward different paths in life. Our current education system does not highlight this side of students. That we have our own, um, that we're all different and have our own stories. It operates by clumping students together, comparing our skills, and standardizing us through tests. College is a competition of who can be the most successful the fastest. This creates an authentic frustration inside of students that we will never be enough. That for us to unlock excess, we must fit into this perfect key size hole that seems to change the second we find one that's close enough. We must meet requirements, deadlines, due dates and still feel miles away from our meeting our goals. Social workers do not fit into this idea of being the same because our skills need to reach to a variety of different fields. You cannot compare us. Comparing us is like comparing the constellations in the sky, impossible and only admired by the most famous astrologist. When I was 10 years old, my IEP teacher, Mrs. Stennis, said, Anissa, you know we could take all that excess energy and put it to good use. <laughs> Um, with her help, I got the confidence to read out loud in public, properly write down what I'm feeling, and the knowledge to that I can love my flaws, not just correct them. Before her lessons, I always felt like the black hole in the classroom that never belonged. I was teased and bullied for being different. Not, enough, um, not white enough for the white kids, and definitely not black enough for the black kids. So I figured my odds would be better with the white kids. I was 20 years old when I met my first black friends that didn't tell me I wasn't black enough for them. Um, for the first time, I felt understood and accepted for the way I looked. These women taught me that my past does not define my future and my skin color is not a disadvantage. They taught me that our stories are the ones that make it possible. Ooh, I gotta flip the page, sorry. They taught me that our st I'm all mixed up, sorry guys. Here we go. They taught me that our stories are the ones that make it possible to build a ladder that reaches to the stars so we should keep climbing and grab them. Tell your story to anyone and everyone who's, and who's, those, are who are most, those who are most important won't forget what made you you. I see twinkles of potential in our class of 2019 every day that are going to embrace this profession like the stars hugging in the sky. The same twinkles that guided Harriet Tubman to grant um, that 
The same twinkles that Harriet Tubman followed to grant slaves to freedom and the exact same twinkles that guided women to fight for equal education and equal rights. No one in this room was meant to be common. We were all meant to be comets, shooting across space and time and touching every soul we reach. Our graduation is the act of us showing our mark on this university, leaving a crater-sized hole in the ground that will shake the entire world. I hope we never forget where we came from, even as we're bursting through the atmosphere to find our place in the stars. Our knowledge will inspire galaxies of generations, and one day we will all be up with the stars where we belong. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anissa. Um, the next speaker has, um, was nominated by her online cohort. She is currently, uh, no, uh, she is double majoring today in psychology and social work. And so I, it is a pleasure for me to introduce Grace Mikula. Good morning. On behalf of the online BSSW class of 2019, I'd like to welcome you to our pinning ceremony this morning. Um, to those tuning in on the live stream and those here in person, we're so grateful to have you with us today. Uh, my name is Grace Mikla. I'm from Jamestown, North Dakota, where I live with my husband and our daughter. Today I will be double majoring in social work and psychology, and upon graduation I will be working in long-term care and hope to continue in the next year to get my master's in social work. I'd like to start with a few uh, stereotypical and highly important thank yous. Um, the first is to my husband, Zach, and our daughter, Lorelai. You two have been there through thick, thin, and thinner. Zach, on those late nights, cramming on my essays and trying to get assignments submitted by 11.59 p.m., you were there encouraging me along and hinting that maybe next time I shouldn't procrastinate until the, next, the last minute. In my indecisiveness, you gave endless support for any decisions I made and remade. You helped me stay dedicated to my goals. Willing or not, you always had an ear to listen to every complaint I made about the class and the amount of work that I had to do. Lorelei, since day one, you were on my lap, listening in in every class, entertaining other classmates through the camera, helping me crank out those papers. Even though mom life is totally stressful some days, you've been such an inspiration to me to stay focused and achieve my goals. You have earned just as much of a social work degree as I have. The support you both have given me through the course of my college career has been unimaginable. I truly could not have done this without you two. Thank you. The next thank you I'd like to give is to my parents, in-laws, siblings, grandparents, and very large extended family. You have also been there, encouraging me to set goals and make things happen. When tough times came along, you stood by me and kept pushing me on. Your support will always be appreciated. To the staff and faculty at UND, thank you. You have put in hours of work into each one of us, mentoring, educating, and encouraging. Your work on stage and behind the scenes has been noticed and truly appreciated. I was blessed to be able to have such a unique group of individuals by my side through this program. Several single moms, stay-at-home moms, one coming to school for the first in their family to get a college degree, one coming for their millionth degree, foster and adoptive parents, and some working multiple jobs. Each brought their own stories and experiences that helped shape our cohort and my education. I wish I would have kept track of just how many hours we spent staring at each other through Zoom. It's a little strange to be here talking to you and not staring at my computer screen. I couldn't have asked for a more supportive and motivated cohort than you all. I had my doubts about being part of an online cohort, but I can honestly say I could feel the support that each of you had for each other radiating through the computer. We struggled through long nights of classes, pages and pages and pages of policy projects, group assignments, research papers, mock group sessions, and so many other assignments we would honestly just rather forget. No matter the issue, you are always there for me and for each other. I'm so grateful to have gotten to know each and every one of you and really look forward to entering the social work profession with you all. 
I want to wish you the best of luck as you move forward on your journeys. Know that whenever you need it, the rest of us are just a Zoom call away. Set your goals high and always believe in yourself. To the whole social work class of 2019, congratulations. I'm sure like many of you, like myself, many of you thought that this day really would never come. Today, all of your dedication and determination has paid off. I look forward to getting to enter the world of social work with you and cannot wait to see the changes that you make in our world. I used to joke that as a mom, I didn't have time to read anything other than children's books. And between hours of homework, work, and mom life, this really is true. I spent many class nights with my textbooks open on one side of the computer and stacks of lift the flat books on the other. However, many of these books have taught me key tools to becoming a better social worker. In the Lorax, Dr. Seuss quotes, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Being a social worker is about dedication to your clients, to your community, and to yourself, taking action when no one else will, and standing up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. The Very Hungry Caterpillar teaches us that in order to get something beautiful, we must put in a whole lot of hard work. Good things like apples and plums, as well as bad things like lollipops and cake, help make us who we are, and over time it'll all come together to be amazing. In Horton, here's a who, Dr. Seuss quotes again, a person's a person no matter how small. Being a social worker means recognizing each person, big and small, and taking the time to hear their stories and advocate for all of their rights and needs. Aesop quotes in The Lion and the Mouse, an act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Being a social worker is not just about big actions, it's about every action and behind the scenes details. Nothing you do will go unnoticed, so take pride in your actions. In Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll quotes, sometimes I believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. As a social worker, you must believe in the impossible. You must believe that it's possible, and then you must make it happen. In the story, Giraffes Can't Dance, we are taught that as a social worker, you must step outside your comfort zone and dance to the beat of your own drum. Make up your own steps and be confident in everything you do. And lastly, Paddington Bear teaches us that social workers should welcome in all people, no matter their race, culture, identity, or religion. Social workers must embrace diversity and use it to strengthen their practice and community. So from these stories, I leave you with a few pieces of advice. The first, live life one moment at a time, and don't forget to live in that moment. The second, don't forget to breathe. Take a moment, center yourself, reset, and then move forward. The third, know your own strength. Know when to say yes, but also know when to say no. And the last, take care of yourself. Self-care as a social worker is highly important, so schedule a few minutes here and there to have a little fun, eat an extra piece of chocolate. You cannot take care of others if you don't take care of yourself first. Again, congratulations to you all, and best of luck as you take steps forward to changing the world. Thank you. So I just want you all to know I'm not texting. If you're up on Twitter, I'm hashtag UNDSWK. Feel free to help live tweet out the ceremony. And hashtag commencement, hashtag social work. Social media. All right. Thanks, Karen Lee. Thank you, Grace. Um, well, now we're on to the pinning ceremony with, um, for each student. So what I want to point out to you is that each student will be a, uh, awarded a pin from their advisor or somebody on faculty. Um, and an ABC of social work written by uh, Dr. Myrna Haga, who this ceremony is in honor of. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to note is that there are some students wearing honor code, um, honor cords. These signify uh, membership in the International Social Work Honor Society. Um, what we're going to do is we'll introduce each student, um, their name, and hopefully pronounce, I can pronounce it correctly, uh, their field agency and their seminar research topic. This is an informal time. We really want to make this for the students and for you who are here to support your students. So if you want to come down and take pictures, please feel free. We'll stop. Um, we want um, you guys to have those memories here for you. Um, memories on live tweet or in your photo albums. Um, so, and I'm not sure, um, Karen Lee, did you mention that this is the last 
official oh, okay well see that's what happens when you come in late you miss things <laughs> okay so what I'm going to do is invite the faculty to come up and um, once you are awarded your pin and your ABCs we're going to have you walk in and walk down the faculty line and we will congratulate you and welcome you into the profession I, I have it written down. I have it written down. So if you want to grab Carolyn so you know who's coming up, Angie. People who aren't here. Nothing. All right. Okay. So we are going to start. The first uh, graduate is Victoria Andrews. And she was at Red River Behavioral Health, and her research topic was Borderline Personality Disorder Social Work Intern Perspectives. Jackie Hoffert is her advisor, and Stephanie Homestead is going to pin her and give her her ABCs. All right, the next student is Taylor Becker, and her internship was at Life Care Medical Center. Her research topic was the Affordable Health Care Acts and Social Workers. Barb Kramer is her advisor. Our next student is Holly Belinsky. Her internship was at Lakes and Prairie Community Action, Rainbow Bridge. Her research topic was therapeutic supervised visitation. And I am her advisor. The next student is Gail Beersier, and she is at Turtle Mountain Tribal Child Welfare and Family Services. Her topic was case manager shortages in child welfare. Uh, Brett Weber is her advisor, and so we're, she's on virtually. Congratulations, Gail. <laughs> the next student is Bryce Boomersbach. He was at Red River Valley Community Action, and his uh, research topic was Housing First. Angie Moose is his advisor. <laughs> There's a chair in the corner. All right, the next student is Andrea Bothan. She was at Valley Community Health Centers. Her topic, her research topic was medicated assisted treatment and I am her advisor.
Dorothea Brevig is the next uh, graduate. She's at James River Correctional Center. Mental health and incarceration was her topic proposal, and Stephanie Homestead was her advisor. And she's online as well. Congratulations. Our next graduate is Ann Broden, and she was at Ann Carlson Center. Her research topic was social economic status in childbearing, child rearing practices. Barb Kramer is her advisor. Our next graduate is Levi Chapin. He was at Three Affiliated Tribes, tri uh, Three Affiliated Tribe Social Services. His topic proposal was use of self in social work, and Stephanie Homestead is his advisor. Congratulations, Levi. <laughs> Kylie Dam is the next graduate. She was at Grand Forks Juvenile Court, and her topic proposal was dual status youth. Angie Muse is her advisor. Our next graduate is Braden DeShock. He was at YMCA Reach and Rise. His topic proposal was toxic masculinity. And Jackie Hoffert was his advisor. And Stephanie Homestead is going to um, be pinning him. Shelby Erickson is our next graduate. She was at Pennington County Social Services. Um, her research topic was understaffing in long-term care facilities and the effects of elderly residents, health, and care. Jackie Hoffert was her advisor, and Angie Muse is going to be pinning her. Tasha Gardner is our next graduate. She was at Red River Behavioral Health. Uh, five stages of grief, how social workers can help their clients was her topic proposal, and I was her advisor. <laughs> Casey Gerving uh, was at Sanford Fargo. Hospice care was her topic, uh, research topic, and um, uh, Isaac Kakari is her advisor, and Angie will be pinning her. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll have you do Savannah. Savannah, I'll have you do. Savannah Gesky is the next to graduate. She was at Village Family Service Center, Devil's Lake. Her research topic was structural family therapy. Yiping Shea is her advisor, and Stephanie Homestead is going to be pitting her.
All right. Um, or Hispanic. Sadie Harrison is the next graduate. She was at McKenzie County Social Services. Her research topic was foster parent preparation and training. And Stephanie Homestead will be pinning her. You pink. <laughs> Shalimar Henderson is the next graduate. She was at Walsh County Social Services. Her research topic was homelessness or homeless in North Dakota. Barb Kramer is her advisor. Sarah Hernandez is our next graduate. She was at Tri-Valley Opportunity Council. Her research topic was selection process and Head Start. Dr. Shea is her advisor and Angie Muse will be pinning her. Our next graduate is Kama Hill, and she was at Carver County Health and Human Services. Her research topic was social work in rural communities, and I believe she was online as well, so congratulations, Kama. <laughs> Anissa Holwerda, did I pronounce that right? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Freedom Church was her internship, and her research topic was burned out social workers, overworked and underpaid, and Angie Muse will be pinning her as well. <laughs> Ariana Houle is our next graduate. She was at Douglas Place, and her topic uh, proposal was perceptions of substance use and abuse. Angie Muse is her advisor. Um, <laughs> Carissa Hubbard is our next graduate. She was at St. Joseph Social Care. Who is homeless? is her research topic and Barb Kramer was her advisor. Bethany Ivesdale is our next graduate. She was at Harmony House. Her research topic was homelessness among U.S. veterans, and Barbara Kramer was her advisor as well. Um, Rebecca Jensen is our next graduate. She was at Lutheran Social Services of North Dakota. Her research topic was unaccompanied refu 
refugee minors and the implication of social work practice, and Stephanie Homestead was her advisor. Samantha Johnson is our next graduate. She was at Century Elementary School. Her research topic was the barriers of transportation within Grand Forks Public Schools, and I was her advisor. Kiri Cast was our next is our next graduate. She was at Grand Forks Senior Center. Elder abuse was her topic proposal, and I'm her advisor. Right. Christine Lawson is our next graduate. She was at Kids Program. Her uh, research topic was Dental Denial, the Cost of Poverty. Yi Ping Shea is her advisor, and Stephanie Homestead will be pinning her. Our next graduate is Bailey Lewis. Uh, her internship was at Encore. She, her topic proposal was benefits of elementary after school programming. Ken Flanagan is her advisor and I'm going to be pinning her. Mariah Martinson is the next graduate. She was at Riverview Recovery Center. Her research topic was on adverse childhood experiences, and Angie Muse is her advisor, and she will be pinning her. Jaquan McCauley is our next graduate. He's at U, um, UND Trio Programs, and Craig Burns was his advisor. Grace Mikula is our next graduate. She was at Ave Marie Village. Um, her research topic was long-term care and aging services. Ken Flanagan was her advisor, and Stephanie Homestead will be pinning her. Ashley Olson is our next graduate. She was at North Dakota Veterans Home. Um, her research topic was hospice care for veterans. Angie Muse was her advisor.
Brianna Peterson is our next graduate. She was at Solutions Behavioral Health Care Professionals. Her research topic was lack of ac access to evidence-based parenting groups and support. Barbara Kramer is her advisor. Taylor Powers is our next graduate. She was at Ruth Myers Adolescent Treatment Center. Her research topic was impact of trauma on adolescents and Brett Weber was her advisor. <clears throat> Courtney Renner is our next graduate. She was at Grand Forks Head Start. Her research topic was the benefits of intergenerational programming and Barb Kramer was her advisor. Damon Schimmel is the next graduate. He was at Rolette County Social Services. His research topic was home and community-based services in rural communities. Barb Kramer is his advisor. Mariah Sharp is our next graduate. She was at Options Resource Center. Her research topic was supportive decision making as, a, as an alternative to guardianship. Yiping She was her advisor and Angie Muse will be pinning her. Megan Sullivan is our next graduate. She was at Hubbard County Social Services. Her research topic was signs of safety in Minnesota, and I'm her advisor. Carolyn Tate is our next graduate. She was at Solutions Behavioral Health Care Professionals. Her research topic was reducing recidivism. Dr. Shea was her advisor, and Stephanie Homestead will be pinning her. Haley Turner is our next graduate. She was at All True Health Systems. Quality of care in nursing homes was her research topic, and Barbara Kramer was her advisor. Our next graduate is Cassandra Wilbinski. 
and she was at Velder, Valley Elder Care Center. Her research topic was filial responsibility laws in long-term care, and Brett Weber was her advisor. Angie Muse is going to be pinning her. Last but not least, Megan Wilmer was at St. Joseph Social Care. Generational mental health was her research topic, and Barbara Kramer was her advisor. Stephanie just pointed out our very last penning with our retiree, so it's very fitting. Okay, um, I we just have a couple extra closing comments, and I think you guys can stay here. Do you want to sit? Okay, we'll have we'll have them stay here. Um, Yes, I have that on my agenda. Thank you for reminding me, though. Um, let's see, where am I at? Oh, um, Grace was talking about Dr. Seuss, and anybody who's had me knows I love quotes. And, um, and so Dr. Seuss, uh, what I want to say is as you leave UND, you are, you are, you've received a gift, and you've earned that gift, but it's called an education, and it's your toolbox that you'll use during your time in the profession. Um, and so... It's time to be change agents. I heard um, Dr. Barktal say that. There's been a number of people that have said that. It's now is your time. Um, and Dr. Seuss states it best. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. On behalf of the department, we want to cr congratulate you and welcome you to the social work educate profession. I want to thank those who are vital to making sure everything runs smoothly behind the scenes. And I want to thank my colleagues here who stepped in at the beginning. Um, first and foremost, um, Brett, Brent Ger Gerbhardt, and I pronounce it, I mispronounce it every time, but he is our de department administrative secretary, secretary. He makes sure everything happens with this, with this, pan um, with this program and ceremony. So thank you, Brett. <laughs> We have two other faculty, or uh, two other administrative people who uh, support us. Uh, Jackie Jensen is our administrative assistant, and um, Lonnie Moen, who is not with us today, she's at home with a baby. Um, she is our academic advisor, and she has met with all of you. So these, this goes to Jackie and Lonnie. We have refreshments in the room next to us. And so as we close here, what I'd like to do is um, ask all the graduates to come up. We're, we're going to take a picture of all the graduates right up here. If people want to stay and take pictures, they certainly can. Or you can make your way next door for refreshments. Again, congratulations, graduates. Thank <laughs> you.